Could you comment on the Tea Party and their tactics? They're almost anarchistic, like government is bad and every, everything that destroys it is good. But like in some ways, they're like the most revolutionary group in the United States. They were able to stop the government for 16 days. Well, I wouldn't call them revolutionary. Uh, I think one of the best descriptions of them is by uh, <clears throat> one of the leading conservative uh, political analysts, Norman Ornstein, who was referring to the Republican Party altogether, the modern Republican Party, but Tea Party is an extreme example. Uh, he just described them as a radical insurgency uh, opposed to uh, rationality, to uh, a political compromise, to uh, participation in a, uh, a parliamentary system, in fact, with uh, no positive uh, goals of themselves. They, they, they do oppose too much state power, but that's a bit of a joke. They also support state power. Powerful, they support the powerful systems that uh, sustain uh, private power, a concentration of power, uh, as opposed to traditional anarchists. The traditional anarchists uh, were opposed to, uh, uh, to, to a master, uh, to a relation of dominance between masters and servants, between owners and workers. Uh, that's one of the major, uh, one of the most elemental uh, uh, types of uh, uh, dominance that uh, are as I've always been in, opposed by any anarchist, but not by them. They're in favor of it. Uh, they want. They're in favor of having uh, the population subordinated to uh, concentrated private power, which should have no limits. Uh, when they call themselves anti-government, that means they don't want government to limit the capacity of concentrated private power to dominate the society. That's very far from any anarchism. The reason that they're successful is that they have an enormous amount of uh, private uh, uh, capital supporting them. They're very heavily funded. They have uh, media outlets. I mean, they're a genuine, uh, they're a popular movement. They have a base in a kind of mostly, uh, almost entirely white, mostly um, petty bourgeois, small storekeepers, uh, and so on, uh, many of them. There's elements, the highly nationalist, uh, there's racist elements. Uh, uh, they basically just, uh, 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 and their, their power and significance doesn't come from their numbers, but by the backing, that, from the backing that they have. They do serve the interests of uh, uh, significant elements of uh, private capital. I was thinking more in the sense that they, I mean, that the, the power of the government is not able to they're not able to uh, legitimize themselves, so they they actually challenge the government very directly, and they ha and they have a they were be, they were able to be voted into power, which they have popular support and they have plenty of financial support, and a lot of their power comes from the radical uh, the gerrymandering, uh, redesigning of electoral districts. You can see it. so, for example, they're powerful in the House of Representatives. Uh, where in fact the Republicans have a majority of the uh, of the of the uh, represent representatives, but with a minority of the votes. So in the last election, the Democrats actually won a significant majority of the popular vote for the House, but by virtue of uh, rearranging electoral districts and uh, vast amounts of money. Uh, you, the right wing was able to take over the representation. In fact, there's a good study by one of the, the main political scientist who works on, has been working on campaign funding for many years, Thomas Ferguson, University of Massachusetts, uh, came out with a study which showed that uh, there's an almost linear relationship between the amount of money uh, put into a campaign and, uh, and uh, electoral victory. It's, these are basically bought. You know.